Welcome back guys. In this video tutorial, we will be talking about the mode of action of cholera toxin. We all know what cholera actually does. It actually results in the watery diarrhea, right? So it, it allows our intestinal cell to lose water in higher amounts as well as electrolytes in higher amounts. So it converts the membrane osmolarity. As a result of that, the, our intestinal cell will release more water as well as electrolytes like chloride <coughs> onto the intestinal lumen. As a result of that, we lose water and our cell is getting dehydrated. Right? So the process <coughs> of cholera mediated toxin effect is very basic like this picture. So Vibrio cholerae is secreting the toxin. It is again an exotoxin made up with subunit A and B. It is another also, it is a type of enterotoxin. I remind you, I have already talked before that the type of toxin can be neurotoxin, cytotoxin or enterotoxin. <coughs> now the example of such enterotoxin is this cholera toxin because it is acting on the enteric cells. So this toxin is having two subunits. One is A, another type is B. But it is having five such B subunits together and two such A parts linked with each other via disulfide linkages. So first what it does actually, <coughs> it will attach to the membrane via B subunit, then helps the A subunit to enter inside the cell. It B subunit never enters inside because the large B subunit is only responsible for the binding of this toxin to the cholera toxin receptor. Here it is the GM1 or glycoprotein receptor is present. Then after <coughs> the entrance of the A subunit, it actually converts the cyto it actually converts the cell signaling procedure inside and the cell signaling using the g protein now the g protein can be cleaved here after that it increases the cyclic amp concentration then it allows the release of water and sodium ion outside as well as the chloride ions so let's look at it in the big picture here <coughs> So what we can see here, this is the toxin having five different B subunits and then two A1 and A2 are linked with each other. We call it altogether an A subunit. Now B is helping then attachment, then A is released inside. Once A is released inside, A is just cleaved into two separate units, A1 and A2. Now among them, A1 is responsible for the maximum dangerous activities. So A1 will go and it will increase the concentration of cyclic AMP inside our intestinal cells. <coughs> so as the concentration of cyclic AMP increases inside our intestinal cells, as a result, it allows massive loss of water as well as ions like sodium, chlorine, potassium, bicarbonate. So release of all the different ions as well as water is going on. So cell is kind of losing everything which is required for its growth and development. So as a result of that, if it is not treated immediately, if the toxin is not released immediately, it finally can kill uh, the individual in hours. So that's a very, very dangerous thing. And actually we have seen cholera taking lives many, many, many regions because it acts as a pandemic once or twice during the history. Right? So that's can, that can be done using this kind of process and techniques. And I hope that's helpful. Thank you.